In this video, I am going to turn a paper shredder into a plastic eating machine. This paper shredder can eat up to 8 sheets of paper at a time, and I would not recommend anything capable of less than 6 sheets. <sighs> There's always that one pesky screw. After I disassembled this particular shredder, I found the most ingenious paper sensing mechanism. Most shredders have an optical sensor that is triggered when an infrared beam is broken, but this low-tech solution blew me away. Now we have to remove the switch that senses if the shredder is sitting on the can. If it isn't, the shredder won't run, for safety reasons. I am going to use this switch as the remote trigger of the shredder when I'm shredding plastic, so we can remove the cool mechanism. I am taping down the can sensing switch so it always thinks it's on the can. Now I can use the paper sensing switch to control the shredder. We need to take off the top plastic shroud as it isn't wide enough for most plastics to fit into. You should be able to pick up the whole shredding assembly and remove the end plate. We're off to use the garage to use the Dremel. My carpet can only take so much. There are two screws that are inaccessible without disassembling the gearbox, so we will cut their heads off so we can remove the shroud. You should be able to break the thing loose now. If you can't, check for more screws. We need to widen the shroud to about 2 inches now, so get ready to breathe in your monthly dose of ABS fumes. Now you have to flip it over and cut as deeply as you can along where you cut on the other side. You should now be able to break the pieces loose with a flathead and whacking tool. Clean up all the residue left by the Dremel so it doesn't interfere with the shredder. Let's install the shroud back on the shredder. We 
have to widen the place on the top casing of the shredder where the paper goes in to as wide as you just made the shroud. Reinstall the end plate that holds the bearings. I did go at this a little out of order, but I was wondering where the wires for the button would go, so I cut a nice little slot. That's it for the inside of the shredder. Let's flip it over and reinstall all of the screws. We have to make the hopper now, so I started by bending a little piece of metal to a 100 degree angle. This part gets a little complicated and dangerous. You need to get the sheet of plastic you are using as close to the blades as you can without them rubbing on the plastic. I wasn't satisfied with the width of the opening, so I made an on-the-fly adjustment. Here you can see that I have made another side with a plastic angled bracket. For the smaller sides, I cut some triangle-ish shapes and just duct taped them on. With that, the shredder is finished. Let's shred some stuff. I started with some milk jug, as it's made from HDPE plastic, and I think you can 3D print with that. After the first and second time through, it is not ground small enough for use in a filament extruder. If you run thick things through, you may have to use the reverse function to help it along.
again, the first time through is not enough. The final result is still a little rough, but should still be usable in something like the Philobot. So far, I have ground PLA, HDPE, and PET. Our final yield of PLA was 225 grams. Not bad. <laughs>